Hello and welcome to part four of this developer diary video on Temple uh, Temple Jump Run X, converting a Unity iPhone project into an and Android project and then publishing that Android project online. So this continues on for part three. So uh, if you've not seen part three, definitely go back and check that out and part two and one, of course. So the next the the next thing that we're trying to do is basically get an email composer going inside of the um, inside of the game that allows the player to send us a score uh, and then we can basically put that score onto a, onto a, a global scoreboard now uh, that isn't through game center or open faint or anything like that uh, it's basically they have to send us a screenshot of the score and then we'll put it online uh, the reason i wanted to do that was basically to give it a kind of old school um arcadey kind of uh, feel and also an exclusive feel to the game as well this is basically for hardcore kind of skill players who really want to do well and who really want to get far and it's really a challenge to top your old score so having like a top 10 exclusive global scoreboard i feel is a little better than the the one where you're online and you can just sort of um you know uh, you can just see it and then that's great it also allows us to have a little bit of interaction with the players, with especially with the top players who are, who are really into the games, and, and it's great to get their feedback and have a conversation with them. Uh, we've done this on our other games, but I'm going to put this into a central Facebook page uh, scoreboard section, and so players can send the score. So what we need to do here is basically check if the email is available and then show the email composer. Uh, this website here is prime31.com, which I use as our uh, plugin supplier for Unity. Because some of the uh, what happens is with Unity is some of the native functionality like showing an email composer, uh, taking a photo, uh, those kind of things like showing the activity view. That's the little sort of spinning uh, activity timer thing that happens. These are not available. Some of them are. Some of them are. Some of them aren't. Uh, but I use this plugin uh, provider because they're they're excellent. And I totally recommend them. So if you are a Unity developer and you need plugins for iPhone or Android. Go to prime31.com. Uh, really cool guys, and, and they support their, uh, uh, their the clients very well. So first thing, okay. So what we want to do is check is an email available, um, and we want to find the main menu game icons and the part which is okay. So this is the send my score. Okay. So this is actually the iPhone code here that I previously did for the iPhone version. And we don't, we can't use that one. So uh, obviously, because that's for the iPhone. So we just want to check the. We want to basically check the, um, uh, just the Android version. So we want to use the Android version one. Sorry. So this is etc. Android, and I'm just copy and paste this one. So etc. Android. That is email available. And what we want to do is so if etc. Android etc. is the name of the plugin, the the ability to the plugin which has the uh, the functionality to show an email composer. So etc. Android is if e, uh, if the email is available is true, then we basically want to do show the email composer. Okay. And I'm just going to get this from directly from the website and then just fill it in myself. So it opens the mail composer with the given information. That's correct. Dot show mail composer string the two address. So the two address, obvious, um, is uh, our support address, which is games at cobaltplay.com. Games at cobaltplay.com. Uh, subjects where well, we can just use my uh, the one from the pre from the iPhone version here, which is another string, which is basically just a text. Uh, a little bit of text. String body. Now this might have to be a little bit different because we don't have a screenshot. Okay, so uh, okay. Here's my high score. Now you see, I could I could have a part a part here which actually just automatically adds the high score as a as it as, uh, pulls it from the game itself and then adds, appends it to the end of this string here uh, at the end of this sentence here but the problem is that players could change that easily you know you can just open up the mail composer yourself and just type in um, a different score and then I wouldn't know the difference uh, whether that was a real score or not so 
Uh, okay, so. Okay, so I'm just going to put here at the top. So I'm going to please that uh, score screenshot to this email. Before sending. Uh, if players do send without a screenshot, that's okay. I mean, I can always, uh, you know, we can just reply and say, hey, you know, thanks for the email. Hope you're enjoying the game. And could you please send a screenshot? Uh, and then that helps us to verify the score. So is HTML, we're going to call that false. We don't want that on caps. Okay, there we go. And we want to add the semicolon at the end of the statement. So games at couplerplay.com, please add uh, please add score screenshot to this email before sending. My high score in Tampa on X4 Android. High couple of play, here's my score in some uh, in Tampa Jump on X. Please add it to the top scores and show it online. Smiley face, there we go. Okay, and then what we want to say is oops, we want to say this is for iPhone because we don't want to execute this code on the Android. So if Unity iPhone and then end if so it doesn't execute on well, it only execute on the iPhone device and this one only execute on an Android device so these are pre-directive um, statements that's that are basically what will happen is if this is an Android device uh, if we're actually rolling, if we're deploying the game onto an Android device, this code won't get compiled. Uh, so whenever the player comes to tap on the send my score uh, text inside of the menu, this this won't exist, and it will just go straight to the Android code, which is this one here. So that should work fine. And if I come back, now we can't test this inside of the the editor because this is specific to the Android device. Um, Okay, so etc. Android. Uh, da, 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 da. We've got a problem here. So is email available? I might have pulled up the wrong one on here actually. Just to see if the email account is available on the device. Now, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to open up this one here. Etc. Android. And maybe I typed that in wrong, so I'm just going to type is email. Okay. So perhaps I've got this one completely wrong, but let's just check to see what the functionality is in here. Uh, because what it looks like I've done is I've, done, I've asked it to, I've, I've tried to call a function that doesn't exist. Show alert prompt. Show alert prompt. Show web view, uh, show email composer. So that's all right. So it looks like it's just the um, uh, is email available isn't isn't in this version of the plugin that I have. That shouldn't be a major problem. Uh, I think most Android phones do already have email on them pretty much. Um, if the account isn't actually signed up, um, it probably just won't do anything. What I mean is, is if the if the user of the phone, if they haven't actually signed up, say a Gmail email on their on their mobile device on their Android phone, then it probably just won't show this. Uh, it won't show the email composer, or it could crash. Um, that's not a major, major, major problem because the amount of times that a person is actually going to tap on that button isn't going to be massive. So uh, I'm not too too concerned and. Um, if, if, uh, if once I get the update for this plugin, then that can be fixed. So let's just go back to this. And what we'll do is we'll just remove this, this if statement. Um, so it pretty much looks like the iPhone one. Okay, take that away. And let's just make this all in line. Save it, come back. And we can see it's compiling on the bottom right. And what we'll have to do is deploy to the, uh, deploy to the device. So it said that show mail composer is not a member of etc. Android. Okay. 
So this is basically the, the process of, of, de of developing, you know, this is how it kind of goes. Um, we get bugs and then we have to try and figure it out. So this is show email composer. Oh, okay, show email composer. Is that different? Show mail composer, okay. So I just typed that wrong perhaps. Um, so, or perhaps the new plugin um, was a little bit different. Uh, the newest version on the internet is a little bit different than the one that I have. So there we go, no errors. So I'm just going to click File, Save Scene, Save Project, and then I'm going to hit Command and B on my Mac or Control and B on the PC to deploy to the to the device. So we're also going to see if the ads appear as well, which is um, which is what I put in before. So the ads that uh, that we use are actually from Google, and they're they're called AdMob ads. Um, so the game is completely free, of course, to download, and this is the way a lot of games work, is they basically are free, but they have ads in the game, which allows them to be monetized. So that's pretty much what our model is, is for freemium. And then we also have some in-app purchases, so you can buy some, so you can buy items in the game as well. Uh, in this version of the end, uh, this is doing that. So, uh, because it's gonna be deployed onto several Amazon, uh, onto several Android app stores. So it's, it would take quite a bit of time to sort of include those SDKs and, and uh, figure out how to do in-app billing on every single channel. Um, so instead, what I was basically doing is sticking to Google Play Market for in-app purchases for Android, and then every other market was just a slightly different version, which didn't have any in-app purchases. Um, it doesn't affect gameplay that much. These, uh, the in-app purchases just remove ads or give you some extra lives. Uh, but Android users could download it from the Google Play Market anyway, so that's not a big problem. So I'm actually just going to cut this video here because this might take a few minutes, and I think I'm probably near my 10-minute mark now. So I'm going to come back, and then I think the next part is part 5, so tune in, and I will be back very soon.